quick warning, make sure that you have backups before attempting this so that you don't lose any content. In my case, I have this backed up in Git version control. You want to make sure that you have a backup so if you upgrade and it goes poorly, you can quickly go back and continue work until you figure out the issue. Hey, I'm going to show the process of updating my video project to 5.4. So if we right click, you can go to switch Unreal Engine version. This might be under the more options section of this menu if you're on Windows 11. And I've got 5.4 installed in the Epic Games Launcher, so I'm just going to select that. I'll hit OK, show the log, bring this up so we can read it. So this is going to take a little bit of time. OK, now that that is done, I'm going to reload the Visual Studio project. All right, with that reloaded, now if I try and build, we'll probably get some compilers from updates. All right, as expected, I have to do a little bit of cleanup. There were build errors, and let's see if we can figure out what those were. So I've been sort of neglecting this one setting for the compiler for a couple versions now. Probably time I updated it. I'm saying that I'm using this backwards compatibility build settings, and I believe I need to update it now. And so it tells me where to do that. So if I make this a bit bigger, so it should tell me where to actually update that. So it tells me to update in the Unreal Editor target.cs and probably the other target.cs files I have as well. So Solution Explorer, I'll go to my editor target.cs. And if I go to the definition on this guy, you can see that the latest is v5. So that's what I'll use. And so with that one updated to v5, I'm going to do a quick search. And it looks like my main target CS also needs to be updated. So I'm going to go ahead and update that one, not just the editor one. So we've got the main project target rules and the editor target rules. And we'll try to build again with that updated. Oh, actually, I got confused with the include order version and the build settings version. So those are not exactly the same. So what I'll do is I'm going to copy this. And I'll paste it here. And rather than using the latest, I'm going to use the, the explicit one. If I hop over here, we can see that there is an Unreal 5.4. So I'll drop that to that. I'll do the same thing for the editor target. All right, and so with our target files set up, I'm going to try and build that again. And now we can fix up any compiler errors. All right, we got our compilers. So I got to thinking, I probably always do just want the latest here. So I'm going to change these settings to latest and do the same thing in the other target file. So I'm going to go through these one at a time rather than just fixing them up and compile it just to make sure we get them right. The first one is complaining about a percent %p, so this is somewhere I'm logging, I'm sure. So I have this file misc prep classes, so if I go there, you can see that I'm just printing out a pointer for a this pointer and a spawn data pointer. If I go to the definition of spawn data, we can see it's a t object pointer. So I think I just need to say dot .git to get the raw pointer from the t object pointer wrapper. So imagine that one, we'll fix that up. So we also have this verbose object in this sort of group of compilers. And here it says that implement the version that takes the asset registry tax context instead. So I think this is due to a deprecation. So if I go to the base symbols, and I have the one that just has out tags, so I believe that's this one. Yeah, we can see that it's been deprecated. And so we want the one that takes that instead, which I'm guessing is this one above it. So I'll copy that and go back to mine. And where I have this, I'll just add that virtual, remove the DLL specifier, add overrides, coming out the old one. And I'll generate a body for that one. All right, so it generated that function, and I don't actually want to return that. I'm just going to copy and paste what we had below. And this is the one that 
got deprecated, so I'm going to comment it out. And for this one, I'll probably need to change this context. I'll move this file over here. I'll save that one. And I guess we can go ahead and run the compiler again. And it looks like I did have an issue with the verbose object thing. It seems the type F asset registry context is not defined. So if we go to what that looks like, it is in the public U object asset registry tags context. And so I'm just going to include that in the header of this file so that it gets it for both. So if I go to verbose object, go up to the header, and make sure to use forward slashes and dot h. So compile that and hopefully that'll resolve that compile error. We could have potentially forward declared it here and included it in the verbose CPP file for better compile times, but it's probably fine for this example project just to include it in the header just so we can get the engine up and running. So now it looks like those compile errors are resolved and we have new ones. So if I look, non-portable use of a T object pointer. So I've got an argument to a function. So let's see, where is this actually at? In the arbitrary real classes. So again, it looks like I'm using a percent %p to print a pointer just for demonstration purposes. So just call dot get instead. So our last one of those seems to be resolved. That's probably the solution here. And let's see if this is the same thing. Looks like it's the same thing, but maybe at a different spot. So I'll do the same thing here. T object property dot get instead. So we get a raw pointer. And that's all the compile errors we have here. So let's see if any new ones show up after fixing this. So another compile error was found at test arbitrary classes. Looks like it's probably going to be the same ampersand pointer issue. So I jump over here. Yeah, we have a percent. P, so I'll just say dot get on that object property. And we'll compile that. So it looks like it successfully compiled. And if I go to the, so if I go to output and build, and select the build section, see if we have any warnings. Looks like we no longer have any of those warnings about bad versions and whatnot, and we're able to at least start booting the editor. It'll probably have to do some shader compiles and blueprint compiles I imagine the first time this is booted, but once this is done, then I'll go and test Pi and then we'll test packaging. So I'm just going to pause the video while it turns through all the shaders and things that were updated for 5.4. While it boots up, if you use the Intrian source search plugin like I do, it's a good time to go to the index properties and update these to 5.4 so that it's actually parsing the correct engine location. And so now the editor has booted up. I will run Pi real quick just to make sure that's working. Looks like Pi is working, so no smoke from that smoke test. And next what we'll do is package, so that's under platforms, windows, and we'll package project. And so I'll just package it here. And it's showing the progress of that in the output log here. It's going to probably take a little bit. So I'm just going to pause the video until it's done. So it looks like the package is complete. So here's the output of the package. I'm just try running that. It says I need to install some runtime stuff. Sure. I'm going to pause the video while it does this. So it looks like I had to uninstall when I do its thing. So that was pretty quick. This is the title screen I had set up for some other tests. So it looks like the package client stuff is working. I'll just Alt F4 to get out of that. So there we have it. That I think covers the update process. So hope that helps somebody. Until next time.